because I, I guess you, have you heard of the phrase that being banned around the moment anti-racist right it's a pretty odd one isn't it it's a bit of an oxymoron um it's either you're racist or you're not right there's no such thing as an anti-racist but you know whatever um this is 2020 lexicon but um I guess this video is a good example as to what they mean when they say anti-racist, right? Um, this is all the ho football hooligans that um, we saw descend on the London streets um, in an effort to protect the statues that they thought were desecrated, that they thought were being disrespected and desecrated by hordes of young, you know, teens uh, or young people in general who are out protesting. Um, police brutality in the wake of George Floyd's death in London the last couple of weekends so as a natural reaction you know with every what action comes a reaction um hordes of Daves around the country thought you know what enough's enough someone needs to stand up to Winston someone needs to stand up for Winston Churchill and go and fight for his honor and it did so much when he went to last year London but the results weren't as they pleased but it's just funny to see some of them actually speak of course it's not their fault you know they're not paid to be orators they're probably not in the right state of mind to speak on camera they probably had a couple of k you know probably a couple a couple tints of k and probably a couple of lines of k in them but um this video from joe's nonetheless very very funny and play for you guys now get this on widescreen <laughs> it has to it just has to be stopped we are one if you want to be one look us why I've probably had a fight with that bloke, you know, that one, that one. Well, well, uh, the football, football, yeah, and we stand together, yeah. It's funny that they stand together, though, isn't it? That one, that one. Is there something in common when other people standing together? There's not, you know, there's something in common about these guys that are standing together. You know, imagine hordes of football hooligans who have really bitter rivals, right? Violent rivalries, rivalries that result in people losing limbs and eyes and, you know, being, you know, scarred for life and shit. But somehow they're able to put the differences to one side for one special day. Not Christmas, not Halloween not fucking you know a, a parade when west ham win the champions league no none of that stuff they happen to put all the differences to one side just so they can go and fight some black kids in london hmm. what does that tell you about these kind of people hey eh? don't like what's happening no mate there's no need to take the statues down you know what i mean it's just like hey, capaldi capaldi hasn't got a patch on me mate yeah there's no need to take statues down, but <laughs> these guys are legend. I'm telling you. Do you think I need a haircut? What? Do you think I need a haircut? <laughs> you need your teeth brushing, mate. <laughs> Thousands of protesters have gathered in central London, <laughs> Westminster, to protest against the Black Lives Matter movement. They've gathered around the Churchill statue behind me after it was vandalised last weekend. We're here to ask them what they think. We're here purely, no violence, just to... No violence, right? And then they've got a video of a journalist or a photographer or somebody within the media who absolutely got his nose smashed the fucking. It looks broken to me because there's blood profusely, you know, dripping from it. And luckily, he's still got his SLR in his hand. That's probably the most important thing. I think if you ask this photographer, if he could get punched in the face or get his camera stolen, I'm pretty sure you say get punched in the face unless he's got really good insurance. But the juxtaposition of saying there's no violence, right? Whilst they punch the lights out of a photographer who happens to be white unfortunately right so they happen to have like a no media rule but they also seem to have a no blacks rule very very bizarre it reminds me of like a <laughs> it reminds me of like a motorcycle club right no cameras no blacks protest about the way our statues are being desecrated or also defaced and because the police have done nothing They're about arguing it there again. we've come here because they won't look after them and that's basically it I love how uh, patriotic these guys are, isn't it? Defending inanimate objects. It's just, it beggars belief, really. Don't get me wrong. I, I was never a big fan of desecrating Winston Churchill's statue. I think anyone who's been studying of history would know Winston Churchill's legacy is tainted and complicated, like a lot of people from his time. But he'd done a lot more. He'd done a lot more good than he has done bad, and the bad that he has done could just be explained away. But you know, according to the times that he lived in, argue if you want, disagree if you want, but it doesn't warrant um, a cost and effort to kind of topple his statue and have it, you know, dumped in a Thames somewhere. He's not that bad of a guy. Let's be for real. 
you, do you but still going out of your way to go and you know have a couple of bevies in you do a couple of lines and drink a stellar or two put on your best stone island and your gazelles to go and beat up kids to, for the statue that's insane this has nothing to do with color creed anything and that's what i said before the other day right what 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 happens if you're raheem sterling and you see this these lunatics with England tattoos on the back, right? And I think that, is that Britain first or no? That's another football. No, that's two England crests on his back, right? Um, they're a bit naughty, these guys, though, isn't it? They're a bit naughty, right? Like, it's hard to put, how would you put on the free line shirt knowing that these, is, these, these people make up some of your fan base? I guess you can't, you know, you can't avoid the ugly truth of the racial tensions that exist in England for the most part. Um, like I mentioned, if you go to football games, you know what the deal is, right? You know what these guys say in the stands. You know what they say to you after you've finished and you're in the bars and pubs and they feel as if like they can talk to you as a friend and you won't judge them. You know what they say and it's never, it's never wholesome. It's purely, I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous thing. You, you, history is what it is. Um, this has turned into a slavery issue from some bloke dying by a corrupt... Uh, policeman. Um, I didn't see any colour. I see a man die by a crap policeman. Hmm, that's a bit of a stretch, though, isn't it? There's obviously, you know, not not to debate the dude, but we know for sure that even though black people are probably um, what's the statistics that they make up thirteen percent of the U.S. population, but they account for fifty percent of the violent crimes. If you're if you've got your sociology hat on, you could explain the reason why, you know, economic situations, lack of opportunities lead to people to commit more crimes. If you somehow address that imbalance, you probably don't get as many violent crimes. And but then on top of that, you also there's no denying that the police do have a tendency to fear black men when it comes to police interactions it's just the nature of it you can you know there's many anecdotal videos you can find on youtube of encounters between black and brown people and you know caucasian people and it doesn't and some of the times the outcomes are the same but some, most of the times the outcomes are not the same um so to suggest that they race didn't play some part in it is ridiculous to, to suggest race was the entire reason why George Floyd died is also ridiculous but you know it's no to have no empathy or humanity in your heart to understand why some black people in the UK in France um, in Holland in Germany in New Zealand in Australia you for, to not understand why some people around the world would feel sympathy towards that and would use that as an opportunity to maybe talk about some of their own injustices happening in their own country is ridiculous as well that's the ridiculous part of it you have to understand that come on yeah stop with the colors stop it because every time you say black lives matter you are putting a divide in between us all not really you are being racist. it's really that people say that though isn't it so it, it's like saying you can't say like you it's like saying you can't say um united 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 or you can't you know chant your own team or something because you're then you're then des denigrating the value of the other team it's a bizarre statement we know all lives matter that's that's a given but in some countries and in some places other lives apart from the indigenous life don't matter as most of the others it's just it is what it is isn't it we know this to be a fact so to go out there and say all lives matter is sort of a redundant statement it's just like all right cool the sky is blue we are aware of that but some people don't believe black lives matter because if anything all lives matter is a demonstration that you don't believe black lives matter because you're so quick to do that yes. all this bickering about color race where you come from it's just it's, it's just daft isn't it so, getting well, out of hand could you tell me what yeah, he's not nothing wrong with him at all is it what uh winston churchill represents to you what does he mean he, to you he is father of our country since the war without the war father of our country who was essentially ousted right from politics and essentially died alone in his bed right father father of our country treated like absolute shit after world war ii but father of our country or would these people rather have adolf hitler's descendants looking after us this is democracy and that's what it's supposed to be a democracy but that's a problem though in a democracy if they would have voted for that statue to come down these same numbnuts would have still been protesting against anyway so that's why sometimes I, I disagree. I think sometimes just tearing it down for the sake of it, even if it's just you know, for the rage tear down and they put it back up later anyway, at least you made your point. 
I think, you know, putting together petitions, you know, going to the local council and arguing your case doesn't really get you far. People don't really do, like I've, I've noticed it myself in working in companies and corporate places. The moment you start threatening people with violence or with, you know, public shaming and shit is the moment they start moving and they start making a change. If you start going down the official channels, they don't do anything. No one pulls their finger out of their ass. We're here to just like stop this carnage. We're here peacefully, as you can see. You don't need to rob places, you don't need to hurt people. You just need to turn up and be peaceful. Mate, people I'm here are getting to, washed. Right, <laughs> to support support the English army. He is you know what? He is what's waved, happening, right? He is I don't waved. agree with it, mate. Statues, <laughs> uh, fucking, it's all over me. Uh, yeah, the racism's coming back, mate, because of the fucking BH men. You what? can't rewrite or dis <laughs> destroy it, your history. History's there for us to learn from and nurture. We've got what we've got today because of what we've learned from our mistakes and our history. To wipe that out, it, 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 it's, I just, it's nonsensical. I guess so, mate. I guess so. But yeah, funny, isn't it? We've all got different.